Hi, Kira listeners. Let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the podcast. Don't forget to join me on X or Instagram at Let's Learn Sumo. Well, he did it. The new Reiwa Monster on debut from Megashira 17 in only his 10th professional sumo tournament. An historic win by the Makuchi debutante Takedo Fuji to win the Osaka Haru Yusho and claim the Emperor's Trophy for himself. A little bit of added drama of an ankle injury from his loss on Saturday night to Asanayama. Only his second loss for the tournament out of 15 days. Let's catch up with Takeda Fuji from when we last updated everybody. He had his loss to Hoshoryu by that incredible Kotonage arm lock throw at the bales by the Ozeki on Thursday. Then he had a power strength battle to beat Wakamoto Haru by wrapping his left arm around Wakamoto Haru's body on Friday night. He entered Saturday needing only one win from his remaining two matches to win the tournament in regular time. If he lost one of those matches, he was still one in in front, so he had to win only one of them to get him that tournament. Losing both would give Ono Sato and Hoshoryu a chance to catch him. Anyway, as it turned out, Ono Sato got a win on Saturday night and Takeda Fuji picked up a loss on Saturday night, which set it up for a grandstand finale on Sunday. However, there had to be a little bit of drama in that. He got into a decent fight with Asanayama. He was going to be a difficult customer for him. Um, The matching committee of the JSA matched him up with Asanayama rather than uh, the remaining Ozeki Takakesho because Takakesho went Kyujo from the a few nights earlier. So Asanayama, former Ozeki, performing well and looking for a return to the Sanyaku ranks. They set up Tachiyai. It was a pretty good hit at the Tachiyai, and Asanayama had the advantage. And as unusually, Takeda Fuji looked to be a touch unstable after that first hit. His whole basho, he has been driving people forward. Well, Asanayama hit him pretty hard, and it kind of put him a little bit off balance. Takeda Fuji tried for the body grip again. Asanayama locked up his right arm on his body, and he got a belt grip with the left. Then Asanayama lost it, he converted to a body grip, he got control and moved Takeda Fuji to the bales and over. If anything, uh, Takeda Fuji lost his match at the Tachiai from the hit that he got, uh, made him a little bit defensive early. So as Takeda Fuji went over the edge, he stepped down or fell down over the Dohyo, down to the big step that goes down to the floor. And apparently he landed quite poorly on his ankle. To the dismay of the crowds, he was wheelchaired out of the stadium into a waiting ambulance after the tournament, uh, where he, and everyone was basically having a worry fest as to whether he would compete on the final day. If he couldn't, he could still win the tournament if Onosato lost his match on the final day against Inform Ozeki Hoshoryu, and certainly that was not going to be an easy win for him. So after a win on Saturday night, Otosato was that one win behind, needing it to win again on Sunday to force a playoff if and only if Takeda Fuji did not compete or lost on Sunday. Look, it would have been a a cruel way to lose a tournament, having lost, uh, having given uh, Onosato a Facencio default win in a playoff bout on a Sunday through injury. No one wanted that. Everyone wanted the... Uh, grandstand finish. The drama and speculation was fairly intense. Uh, Ankle, look, there were suggestions he'd done an Achilles tendon. Uh, Anyway, the photos everyone saw was of Takeda Fuji leaving the stadium in the wheelchair with his whole lower leg stabilised and wrapped and obviously with a bit of ice on it. Sunday arrived and word was that Takeda Fuji would appear. His injured leg was not so bad. Uh, The question was how bad he could or how well he would be able to fight with that injury. Anyway, questions were answered. He entered the stadium under his own power, albeit he was a bit ginger in walking. He wasn't necessarily limping, or he was trying to hide it. We now know that he had a number of painkiller injections, and against the advice of his Oyakata, he was desperate to fight. Takeda Fuji walked in, and weirdly, 
This match was scheduled at halfway through the evening's bout. That's something that NHK, the uh, Japanese telecaster, did not pick up on for world viewers. If you were watching on NHK World, you would have noticed they came to broadcast this uh, Saturday, uh, sorry, last day, 15 minutes after the Takeda Fuji bout finished. What poor timing. Anyway, uh, Takeda Fuji had his right angle wrapped. Uh, he slow walked behind the scenes. Anyway, he came out. His opponent on Sunday was Gonayama. Now, Gonayama has had 10 wins. Bear in mind, there were two for Sencho defaults by uh, Surigishu and Tobizaru's absences. Uh, he would have been Kachikoshi regardless at eight wins, but um, not a stellar tournament, but a good tournament. Uh, had the touchy eye, and of course... Takeda Fuji starts a long way back from uh, the line. I think it's a bit of a, a run-up there. Uh, maybe something the others can work on. Anyway, Gonayama got into the touchy eye. He was looking for a left body grip, a left belt grip. Uh, Takeda Fuji was looking for a left body grip, but he was also searching for a right belt grip. Didn't quite get it. Um, he got a bit of a body grab, or a very vague grip on the belt, and he body pumped Gonayama to the edge, but Gonayama forced the grip to break. It wasn't that good a, a grip, as I said. He got a little bit off balance, and I, I kind of, I'm not sure whether that was Takeda's, Takeda Fuji's movement that got him off to the side and got him up on one leg, because if he did, it effectively gave Gonayama a let off at the bales, and they pushed their way back to the centre. Takeda Fuji, he changed tack and went into thrusting mode and forced Gonayama back and over the bales. Oshi Tayoshi, massive crowd reaction. Everyone in that stadium, knew they were witnessing history. 110 years uh, since a debutante has won the Yusho. People might ask, why were no, no cushions thrown? Well, they're tied down in Osaka, aren't they? Anyway, he is called Reiwa's new monster, Reiwa being the era defined by the new emperor. Uh, each era is uh, named after the emperor. Now, his mother, single mother, who raised him, couldn't get a ticket on day 15. And she sat outside the stadium watching the tournament on her phone. I found out afterwards she didn't want special treatment. She didn't ask to get in. She didn't want to cause trouble. Uh, they would have found her a place, but it is a very Japanese cultural thing not to want to cause trouble, not to want to be special. Um, but it is a wonderful story. He wanted to pay back his mother uh, for raising him uh, as a single mother and he wanted to be able to earn enough money to support his mother. I think he's done that now. So the Takeda Fuji on a Sato meeting on day 10 resulted in a win for Takeda Fuji and I'm look I'm still a bit surprised it didn't go to a mono e judges conference. It really did look closer than the Goji's uh, Gyoji's Gumbai gave it. Uh, but either way they called it that way. Onosato, he similarly steamrolled most of his opponents this tournament. Uh, a good, strong touchy eye, really great pushing power. And it lifted him along and kept him in contention throughout the tournament. Onosato, he met Abi on Saturday. Uh, Abi performed well, lots of thrusting attacks, uh, but he just got a bit too overcommitted on Onosato, and Onosato pulled back, disengaged, big thrusting attack. And Abi face planted as Onosato went backwards. So that got him uh, the win on Saturday. Left Onosato needing the win on Sunday and either a Fusen or a loss by Takeda Fuji on Sunday to force the playoff. He was given a pretty difficult match on Sunday against Ozeki Hoshoryu, who's in pretty good form. Hoshoryu got a good left grip. He lost it, then got a meagre right grip to execute a massive Shitanage arm, underarm belt throw on Onosato, who got flipped. Uh, two losses to Ozeki's, Hoshoryu and Kotonawaka, seem to be the difference between the two men. Onosato and Takeda Fuji both received special prizes, three for Takeda Fuji uh, and I believe two for Onosato. Uh, they each come with about $20,000, uh, that's Australian dollars, so perhaps about $15,000 US uh, and about $100,000 uh, Australian, so probably about, uh, I think, $70,000 US for winning the Yusho itself. So three special prizes for Takeda Fuji. So he took quite a little pay packet and I'm sure he'll be able to look after his mother after that. There is a great photo of him and his mother on my ex-account Let's Learn uh, Sumo. It's one of my favourites now. 
Terana Fuji Yokozuna from the same stable as uh, Takeda Fuji. He said he was happier about Takeda Fuji winning than he was all of his nine new shows. Uh, maybe a bit of an overstatement, but either way, uh, I would suggest that all of his uh, fellow Rikshi from the Isagahama stable were extremely happy to see him win. Uh, he is a very large man. His uh, trap muscles at the uh, his uh, neck muscles are huge uh, and uh, his enormous shoulders. I wouldn't like to be hit by him. Anyway, they have a big flag parade after the Yusho uh, where they get in the back of the car and they take the trophy and the flag that he's presented after it. Uh, Nishiki Fuji was the flag bearer in the parade. Now, Nishiki Fuji, uh, Takeda Fuji was his Sukibito. Uh, that is his helper, his right-hand man, uh, when he's in the tournament. So now Nishiki Fuji got the honour to carry his flag. So, uh, look, a couple of matches on Saturday and Sunday. Hoshoryu against Kotonowaka. He got his feet tangled and went down at the bales. Bit of a giveaway to Kotonowaka, uh, really. Um, Kitashima showed some good fight against Kotonowaka on Sunday. It was a good match, bit of a slap contest to start. Bit of a strange open style, mate, where they looked at each other. Kitashima got a rear grip and they both went to the bales. Kitashima tried to turn Koto Nawaka over. Uh, he recovered. Koto Nawaka was in a bit of funny sideways position against Kitashima. Kitashima then tried a big Kotonage throw attempt, but uh, somehow Koto Nawaka saved it again. And then he finally got uh, Koto Nawaka launching him, Watanage, over the bales. Really good effort by Kirishima, but it does finish an awful tournament, 5 and 10 for him. Koto Nawaka finishes 10 and 5. The Shinozeki will be very happy with that. He was happy enough that he's now decided that he's going to claim the new name or Shikona of Koto Zakura after his father for the next tournament. Uh, so in May, there will be no more Koto Nawaka. It will be Koto Zakura. Look, some pretty patient sumo by Wakamoto Haru on day 15. He used his hips to pretty good effect to break a belt grip by Asanayama and Yorokiri. Him uh, both finished the tournament 9 and 6, pretty respectable. Sekiwake Daisho finished with Makakoshi only managing 6 wins after his loss to uh, Hiradu Umi, I believe, on last day. Hot and cold is probably the best way to explain this basho for Daisho. I would think, uh, look look for him either it being demoted to Komosubi, but more likely Magashira at the next Basho. I suspect Magashira won after Wakamato Haru fell similarly uh, in after November and turned up in Magashira 1 in January. Komosubi's uh, Abi thrusting attack was too much for Atami Fuji, our atomic man. Abi he finishes a good tournament on nine wins. Uh, Atami Atomic will be happy with a Kachikoshi at eight wins after his Makekoshi of six and nine in January in that meat grinder upper Magashira position. Uh, they really do cop it there and only the good ones come through the other side. He did beat uh, two Ozekis, Kirishima and Takakesho. So well done to Atami Fuji. That's what you've got to do to uh, keep your position in the upper Magashira ranks. Our other Komasubi, Nishikigi, well, he had a absolute shocker at at three wins, certainly a big demotion coming there for him. Uh, Ura, our crowd favourite, and Osaka boy, he'll be very unhappy with his six and nine. Look, he beat three of the Sanyaku, but he lost to his lower-ranked Rikshi. It's just disappointing, some of those losses. Uh, you know, he really should not be dropping those matches from up at Magashira. Asanayama, he's looking for Sanyaku promotion at nine and six. May say six or nine, unlucky. Some pretty good efforts there, but efforts don't rack up wins. He needs to find a way to win those unlucky matches. Tobizaru, Kachikoshi at eight and seven, uh, with one day absent. Uh, and we noticed an excellent tournament for him, our big bear, Takiyasu, 11 and four, a perennial runner up. Uh, no one deserves a basho more than he. He's had many, many attempts and gotten so close on so many times. I hope he can keep this going, keep the form going. Now, a bit of trivia. You may have seen on the last day, if you're watching the telecast, that Hiradumi beat Daesho on the third last match of the night. Well, he was given as well as the normal sponsor envelopes with prize money, he got two arrows wrapped up. Well, on the last day of the tournament, the third last match on day 15 gets arrows. Now, they are wishing good luck to be a Komasubi in the future. 
to the winner. Second last match gets a string uh, of some description, which is wishing them to be a Sekiwake. And the last match gets a bow, as in a bow and arrow, wishing them to be Ozeki. Now, remember, Yokozuna is actually not a rank. It's actually just a senior Ozeki. And the winners of the sumo, going back 150-odd years, didn't get a trophy. They got a bow, as in a bow and arrow, from the emperor. So the Hasho, uh, sorry, the Haro Basho in Osaka, it's known for throwing up some unusual results, and this surely is no different. Really was quite the tournament, uh, big failure by some of the Ozekis, particularly Kirishima, who will be Karaban next tournament. Uh, reasonable tournaments from our Ozeki uh, Hashoryu and Kotonawaka. Takakesho, look, again, that neck is never going to come back good. He's just got to live with it or retire. Uh, that's a shame. He's uh, probably will hang on for a few more tournaments. Uh, he did escape. He got his Kachikoshi. He will escape Kataban. So he may, depending on how well it is, he might take the next tournament off and then go Kataban again, or he may just come back and put up with the pain. So thank you for joining me over this tournament, uh, the 15 days. It is a little bit of effort to put this together. So uh, thank you for being patient with me as I try and put it together by myself and watch all the matches again and again and again. Uh, keep an eye out for the documentary coming shortly on recently retired and uh, disgraced Rikshi Hokseho. Uh, I'll be doing a little special episode on him. That'll be coming hopefully just before Easter. Uh, and uh, I'll try and push out a few more uh, episodes before the May tournament. Uh, I'll get some insider uh, views from a friend of mine who'll be at that tournament come May. So join me then uh, and uh, we'll go through some more sumo. Hakio listeners, let's learn sumo. Hakio! Hakio!